I'm Suzanne Henriksen, a researcher and storyteller by trade and a world explorer drink local enthusiast by heart. I'm traveling the world to celebrate and share the people, the process, the stories, and the innovations behind craft alcohol. And I can't wait to share our amazing finds with all of you. So let's get drinking, crafty cask style. to be here. We are going to take a little tour, we're going to do a little taste, we're going to learn all about miscellaneous distillery really, and then we're going to share it all with all of you. So how'd you guys get started? You've been around for a couple of years, right? 2000? Yeah, 2016 we opened, uh, opened our doors at the end of the year. You know, for me I wanted to make something real, physical, that was all, all mine, you know, that I could hang my hat on and sure. say, I made this product and it took a little while to figure out what that was until I realized I really love, you know, rum and I really love whiskey, especially dry whiskey. So everything is, starts here. This is an electric steam boiler here. That's our main source of heat for Josie Whales, which is our mash tun. So Josie Whales being the outlaw that the furnace was moving. Um, oh, yeah. uh, I'm a huge Clint Eastwood fan, so I had to name at least one piece of equipment after it. Um, <laughs> and what we do here is we'll add in our raw ingredients in the water. Uh, so for our rums, we're just adding in black strap molasses for dark brown sugar. Uh, if you look inside, we've got a great big paddle mixer in there that's going to mix this all up at about 200 RPMs. Uh, and that's going to get us a nice emulsification, emulsification get that all stirred up. Transfer the rum uh, fermentation over into one of these tubs, and then we've opened our fermentation for about five days. All our whiskeys are for our rye, 100% rye grain, nothing else added. Uh, so we don't do any malting, we don't do any corn, we don't do any barley. It's just rye. Yeah. And then the same idea for our corn whiskey, 100% corn. Um, but for our bourbon, since I really like rye, and bourbon has to be 51% corn. Yeah. I do 51% corn and 49% rye. So a high rye bourbon. Very high rye bourbon, yeah. Um, so, uh, and that just one double bowl of things. Nice, so, so, yeah. congrats. So this is Rose Bash Bourbon Whiskey. Um, this is a straight version, so we haven't had the straight in the, uh, less than two years for a while. Um, we've gone to straight only. Um, so this is actually named after May, I was wondering if Meg's family was going to get some. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, well, the funny thing was, was there's not like, you know, my grandmother was a drinker, like, great grandfather lived in Houston. Sure, and yeah, the story has to like, stories, but with, with Brill, and for some reason, her 90th birthday, July 4th. So, oh, cool. you know, she's still with us. For a long time, I was actually like, hesitant to put her photo on the bottle because the other two had already passed. So there was like, well, sure. like, am I tempted fate by doing right, this? Right. Um, but anyway, she's, she's still alive. She's, and we put the labels out so we could. <laughs> um, but, kind you know, of for her to like, be alive and like, wait, yeah. this is yeah, she, like, oh my God, it's perfect. We saw her a couple months ago. She was like, ecstatic. She, yeah. like, she had a bottle of the city on her, like, credenza or whatever. So it was like the light was shining right now. <laughs> it's like it's a photo of her, you know. <laughs> so, That's cool. So fifty-one percent corn and forty-nine percent rye, and it's all done the same way, you know, on with the stones and everything. But it really just barely meets that definition for bourbon. Right? I wanted more rye in my bourbon than I wanted corn. Yeah, that's the big killer. Culture and Lefty are kind of our finishing still, so basically all our whiskeys do a double pot distillation. It looks like we have something happening in this one. And then huh? Georgia is our vodka and gin still. Okay. So yeah. we're currently making a vodka, this is off of our, our rum rum. All our vodka and gin is 
molasses based. I read that. Yeah, yeah. that's fascinating. There isn't a lot of right molasses no, based vodka or gin out there. It's more expensive, so usually you're using one of those cheapest. Sure. Around here, corn would be the cheapest. Right. But I really like the flavor I get off of this. Yeah. It's a unique product. It's a unique product. Right. And you're already using molasses and have that whole process for all and everything. Yeah. Really cool. So this is running, we're going to collect about four and a half gallons at 95%. That'll be our vodka. I'll put it back in the pot the next day, run it again, but this time I'll we'll actually use the gin basket at the top okay. and do a big drink fusion. We mm -hmm. do six botanicals in our gin, juniper, pink pepper corn, lemon peel, orange peel, or a sweet. Mm -hmm. That's it. Cool. So yeah, it's a, it's a light, contemporary style gin. Got a great drink with pink pepper corn, sounds kind of fun. So these operate like plates, you were exactly. saying? Exactly, just like plates. So the idea here is that with the bubble caps, um, what you'll have, this is called a deflagmator, so you're running cold water through here, uh, basically flooding you know, the vapor back into liquid form, and it floods these two plates, so then as the vapor comes up from the top, the alcohol vapor comes up from the top, you have a, a barrier of liquid at the top of these bubble caps. Ah. So it's gonna come out of that vapor form back into liquid, out of that vapor form back into liquid. Every time it does it, it leaves the heavier properties like water behind it, and the alcohol becomes purer and purer as we come through. So now this is the barrel aged version of our rum. This is Poppy's finest rum. And as you see on the bottle, this is my great-grandfather from Cuba. He was born in the States, but then moved to Cuba at two years of age um, and lived there until he was in prison in 59 when Batista fell and Castro came in. So he was in prison for about five years wow. in the capital before they finally released him and then he moved to Puerto Rico and lived the rest of his life there. Well, I think Poppy would be proud of us. It's nice. So this is, you know, been in uh, one of those 30 gallon barrels, this batch of 650 days. We're now even surpassing that, you know, over two years. Mm -hmm. And it just kind of develops this you know, wonderful full body flavor. Again, you know, keeping it at 50%, mostly for the idea of if you want to drink this you know, neat, you can. You can. Yeah. But you can also, we, we trust that everybody in the United States has a safe, reliable source of fresh drinking water sure. that they can prove down whatever their yeah. suiting is. So the higher I leave it, the more you can play with it. Yeah, it's funny, when we do a lot of our whiskey tastings, we're constantly kind of trying to teach people that because a lot of people will be tasting some of these things, you know, like Balcones rye or something mm -hmm. that's like really up there. And they're just like, ooh, it's too much for me. And we're like, okay, but that's intentional. Yeah. Actually, it's putting like flexibility you in your hands. Yeah. Like, that's not that. like, whoops, the distiller messed up and they're making a really hot, you know, spirit, it's like they're leaving it hot because A, it shows up better in cocktails, yes. um, and B, now you get to play mad scientist at home and sometimes you might want it a little hotter and other times you might want it smooth sipping. What are you using these smaller five gallon barrels for? That's how we started off on um, all our barrel programs. So yeah. whether it was the bourbon or the rye or the rum, Start off with fives, tens, and fifteens, and we're, we're slowly phasing those out to go to four and thirties. So everything started off in that, but then we age for less time. So right, five, right. So five to six months. Learn a little faster and figure out what you want, and what you like. And have truly aged products, you know, rather than kind of a semi age. So this is barrel aged for two years in a 30 gallon uh, medical Americano charcoal free. Um, Gertrude was my grandmother on the mother's side, who was also a rye drinker out of Nebraska. Uh, 
Um, so we decided that she's the right person to name this spirit after. Um, I used to always go out and visit her, and she'd drink her, her running water you know, each night. So it's the same thing as that restless. But this was what I was going for when I knew I was going to the story. I knew Gertrude was what I wanted to do. You said you don't do any alternate practice at all, just straight right? Straight right. One type of right? One type of right. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's what we Yeah. Yeah. And all of the brains for all the whiskeys, they're all milled up. So we do this so that we don't heat up the brains. It just kind of nicely breaks it apart rather than the roller mill or hanger mill and just heating it up so we keep a lot more oils and keep a lot more of that profile. Tipler Nation, we found a treat with Miscellaneous Distillery. So um, we just tasted through their entire lineup of 10 spirits and not a bad one in the bunch. And in fact, amazing across the board. We just were figuring out what we're gonna take with us, um, what we're gonna bring back for our giveaways, where you can win some of Miscellaneous Distillery's delicious spirits, as well as some of our other favorites from breweries and cider houses and wineries and distilleries around the way. So cheers from Miscellaneous Distillery in Maryland. And we will see you at our next stop soon. Bye, y'all.